In 1936, Felicia Brown travelled to Spain by car with her friend Edith Bone. They arrived in Barcelona on the eve of the Civil War. Through an Artist's Eye presents seven key stages in Felicia's life, marking her journey to Spain. For each stage, there is a painting and a poem. Felicia was born in 1904 in Thames Ditton, London. The family home, the Elms, still stands overlooking Milbourne Pond. On a February day, new life was tucked under an arm, vulnerable as tomorrow, tough as the ice on Milbourne Pond. You were born too late for leaves, too soon for catkins on the oak outside your house, always the nonconformist. Dragonflies leave a bright streak of themselves above the water, rebel blue trams on a circuit of green stations. On a blue plaque Surrey afternoon, it's General Sir John Lambert they remember on the house where you were born. Great, sinister and fate-heavy, Berlin opens itself, and you go in. Steam trains thrust on strong elevations to Potsdam, while mannequins outstare police polished in their helmets, Aryan boys are being groomed for jackboots. Oh yes, those yes-men will march with common good wrapped in a swastika. And you preparing yourself, and in your hand and on your heart, I am a communist. It's Doll, Rose, Kit and Gladys I think of, and young Marjorie, 17. Hands coarse as lobsters, one on the splintered brush, the other on the filthy rag, bent like stiff crabs looking for morsels under tin shelves. It's the sound of crusted pails edging, scraping the stone flagged floor, I mind, because I know the five in the morning pain of pale faces and long labour. So much to be done and sung for as we slug and thwack and peel the skin off spuds that I, for one, would not be in any other job in the world.
Paris swirls around my head, a city full of other lonely cities, and I am less than one left to wander savagely about the place. I can see the music through the rain like an impressionist destiny, but when I ask what am I, the fairground pony only knows to stare with his glass eye, a rod thrust through his belly, and behind the weeping glass, Le Monde, is a sideshow twitching from his tinny tomb, waiting to expose a ghastly truth, lonely as a toad with no hole. I am her passenger, our Austin coupe held together by chicken wire from Calais. For miles our cockeyed GB plate has clung for its life and hoped for a future. I am dizzy now, as the wheels that turn and snake towards Port Beau. We have crossed the border, or she has and I with her, blinded first by sun-white sea, then by her fury at nothing I can grasp. As I blink, the sea recedes, and now a hairpin flashes a spectre of new land in steep, dry tufts and scrub. I know almost nothing of this place. What is its tongue? Mine dares not speak besides so much. As men in forage caps, tipped on the side of unshaven heads, go tramping the trenches by Estanco Poblet, something is moving. A movement is smiling as they play tunes with their rifles across shoulders, and smiles are imagining something of greatness they may carry with them. And Lenin and Stalin are watching from the Hotel Colon, supervising gatherings of walls by lottery stands, where something may be won. At two in the afternoon, ten hearts forget their rhythm. At two in the afternoon, the jaundiced plain is breathless. At two in the afternoon, at two, at two, at two, at two. In the flash of a crack and the thought of a pause for a comrade came silence, peaceful as blood. The stalk from its tower is rising, rising, rising. The Sierra is a line of bullies mocking, mocking. And the only truth is the night will be black as a sack of coal on the train that came at two in the afternoon.